Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm going to try and do a little bit of DIY, which I'm really looking forward to. So this video all started when I decided I was going to try and buy some display cases for my 3D printed projects and such because they've got quite fragile paintwork on them and I don't really want to have to keep dusting them so if I put them inside a case I can keep the dust off them which will solve the problem. So I went on to Amazon and started looking at basic acrylic display cases and there were a lot of money really. I mean look at this one, £29.99. That's actually more than the locomotives themselves cost to make and uh, yeah I've got a bit more self-respect than to do that so that was out of the question. So instead I decided that I was going to build an entire museum which is a slight exaggeration because what I actually found was this. This is like a, a wall mounted display cabinet which is not much more than just the single acrylic display case and clearly this cabinet is big enough to fit loads and loads of models on there. So what I've decided to do is get one of those, put it on the wall and then I can fill it with everything I've created over the years, my experiments, my 3D prints and create a little bit of a Sam's Trains museum for people to see uh, if they come up here into the loft. So that is my plan for today. I ordered one of those display cabinets from Amazon and it has arrived. <coughs> yes. So at the moment, to be fair, it does resemble more of a bonfire with glass in it than a display cabinet, so I've got to build it and I'm going to take you along on that trip to show you how the thing goes together. And then when I've finished it and it's up on the wall, if it's any good and it turns out it's actually a really decent product for storing models and displaying them, then I will include some affiliate links in the description so that you can buy one yourself and display your own models. But let's get started, let's take a look at the instructions and see how easy this thing is to put together then I'll get it on the wall and start building my museum. Okay, I'm looking forward to this. So according to the instructions, the first step is going to be to screw wooden parts 1, 2 and 3 together. I think that sounds simple enough. And get this, the wooden parts are all labelled and the bags of different screws and nails and stuff, they all have labels on them so you know exactly what everything is. It looks like they've tried to make it obvious what you've got to do and so far it looks like it's going to be a foolproof build. So fingers crossed that is the case. So I'm going to use screws... A, I believe, and uh, screw these together. Let's see how this goes. The only thing that does appear to be missing is the little sort of plugs that you put in over the screws once they're in. Haven't found those yet, uh, but you know, not that bothered. I'm a bloke, I don't care about that sort of thing. All right, that's it. We've uh, got those together, not very rigid of course, but uh, they'll be all right once everything else is on. Oh God, so it's not taken long to get to the terrifying part. Already we are putting glass doors into position. So I need glass door four to go into the frame that is uh, quite loosely screwed together at the moment. So I have flipped the frame over so that the, the glass is gonna be closer to the floor. Uh, so let's get this one in. I think I've got it in the right orientation and it's gonna go into the back runner. I bet no one will complain that I'm doing this on the carpet. Okay, and then part number five is going into the bottom runner. Uh, this is pretty decent, I have to say. It's good quality tempered glass right here, so I'm quite impressed with that so far. Oops. That's in, tentatively. <laughs> All right, what's next? So next it looks like I'm supposed to put these shelves inside it so that they will obviously fit in once the rest of the case is built. Um, but I don't really want to do that because obviously it's glass down on the floor at the moment. So I'm going to go off the instructions a bit, put the other side panel on, then stand it up and we'll put the, uh, the shelves inside. All right, looking good. So, I mean, the doors, they seem to be reasonable they seem to be free to move in their runners and stuff and they're not dropping out and there's not too much up and down movement there is a little bit so i'm gonna have to be careful because i do not want to see these glass doors cascading down onto the ground because uh, that could make a mess apparently the shelves have got to come inside the cupboard so let's uh, do that I feel like there might have been an easier way to do this, but um, at least I get to find out what it will be like for the models when they're inside. 
I don't quite know why we've got to have these shelves in here right now because, I mean, we've got to flip the thing onto its back later on to put the back piece on. Uh, so couldn't the shelves have gone in then? But uh, no, we'll follow the instructions. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> So it looks like now I've got to decide where I'm putting these uh, sort of holders for these shelves. So I think I've got this worked out. I've got plenty of them anyway, and four shelves including the bottom. So it's gonna be like five surfaces. So I'm gonna put one on the bottom surface, and then I'm gonna miss one and put some in up here. Miss another one and put one in here so I can put some of my taller creations into these spaces, I suppose. And then one up top, and that should be all four shelves. Definitely want to use all four. I suppose if you've got uh, bigger stuff, you might want to just use three of them. But yeah, I want to try and get as much storage as I can out of this if possible. So here's where it gets interesting. I've got to carefully lie it down and put the back panel on. Oh. So this is not a good quality component, unfortunately. It's just sort of ultra thick board, really. Um, it wouldn't be a problem because it's only the back piece, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is holding any part of it on the wall. No, I don't think so. No, the brackets that hold it go on the edges and they will screw into the frames. But uh, yeah, <laughs> like masking tape holding the two halves together. So I need to nail this to the back part, basically. So uh, let me get the nails. I'm even going to use my sensible hammer for this. No, I'm not. It's, it's not doing the job. So I'm going to get my naughty hammer to do the job. Yeah, of course the close-up one didn't go in straight. And then finally, I've got these brackets which go into, well, you screw them on there. So it goes through the backboard and through the main frame. And that's what you hang the cabinet up on the wall with. Uh, I think I saw somewhere that this is rated for one kilogram, a one kilo load. Um, I might be sort of close to that mark, so I might put some more screws through it, but we'll see. There we go. Yeah, that's not bad. That'll be all right hanging off that. I'm planning to put my museum on this wall here, on the back, but obviously there are one or two things on the wall already, so I'm going to have to lose my picture. Uh, obviously I I'll, won't get rid of this picture, I'll put it up somewhere else on a different bit of wall. But the biggest, most pressing matter is the um, sort of whatever this thing is, this, uh, this tool chest, because uh, uh, this thing has also got to go. And typical me, because I'm belts and braces, this light little cabinet is bolted to the wall with four <laughs> screw nuts and bolts. So I've got to go into the room behind and unbolt it. And uh, hopefully it won't drop off the wall and spill all my tools everywhere. Although I will keep the camera rolling just in case. You don't want to miss that. All right, let's just loosen off some of these. They might be loose already. Just so that I can actually undo the, uh, the nuts without tools on the other side of the wall. And yes, just in anticipation of the comments. I know I should take everything off this before I take it off the wall, but I want my museum now. And that would take time. Oh, I need the light on. Right, I can take it down now. Tell you what, folks, it's a bit cold in here. Flipping heck. Oh. <laughs> it's... Should be able to just pull it off the wall now. Let's take my motors off it first. Oh, I didn't plan this bit very well. Right. There we go. Easy. So this is the bit that could be catastrophic. I need to figure out where my holes have got to go. So that's where the museum is going to be. Now, how do I make holes in the, well, how do I mark where my holes are going to be without letting this thing fall on the floor and smash? Let's hold it up with my knee. Oh. <laughs> the 
sound of smashing tempered glass fills the air. Right. <laughs> you get good at doing stuff like this by yourself. That's good. Right. Oh, goodness me. Right. Let's make those holes. So this is a plasterboard wall, which means it's not as strong as a brick wall. And that means I can't use the raw plugs supplied in order to fix my cabinet on there safely. And you can get special plugs that are designed for plasterboard walls, but I haven't got any of those. And so rather than buying some, I've made these things. So these are just 3D printed discs with the nut centered in the middle of it there. And this thing should spread the load quite nicely on the back of this wall so I can bolt the cabinet on. And also there is some blocking at about this sort of level. So I will sink some wood screws into that as well, a bit further down the cabinet, just through the backboard near the edge. And that'll just make me feel a bit better. Right, let's make holes in my wall. Small holes to begin with then, because I want to evaluate where these are poking through on the other side of the wall. Yeah, that's all good. Right, bigger holes. So my aim with this is to put a washer on it as well and put the cabinet on, hook the cabinet on and then tighten these screws so that we're pulling into the wall and sort of really compressing it and that should spread the load over a larger area. So I'm going to thread my bolt on the back of the wall. Right, let's try putting the cabinet into position then and hopefully it won't pull the wall down <laughs> uh, before I've had a chance to tighten everything up. Hopefully not. Right, so it's pretty close to being level actually, which is good. So I'm just going to lift this end up very slightly as I have and uh, tighten everything down. And then hopefully that will be nice and solid. And then hopefully the friction from those 3D printed discs should allow these to be tightened from the outside. Yeah. Lovely. Yep. And then that wooden blocking that's behind this wall is at about 120 centimeters up from the carpet, from the ground. 121, I apologize is approximately there. Nope, that won't do. Perhaps this. Yes. I need some power behind me for this. This is never coming off the wall. So now I've got the fun job of trying to get the shelves in place, but I don't think it'll be too bad. Let's have this go up here like this. Oh dear. That's all a tight fit. It's got to go up level, I think. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Okay, uh, not hugely secure, but I think it will do. All right, so yeah, overall, I think that's a pretty decent product right there. Not bad at all. Okay, so let's start trying to get some exhibits into my museum, shall we? How's this for size? Oh yeah, nearly perfect. So one, two, three, four, five of those, and the jobs are good in. And funnily enough, this is the track I used for my experiments. <laughs> so uh, perfect, perfect thing for the Sam Strange Museum. So Pride of Place is going to be Gladstone, of course, who I'm going to try and put up here in the top. And she's going to be coupled up to these, which are my 3D printed bogey coaches. So let's get these in.
a good fit on that. And then next we've got the Manning Wardle class that I built, as well as the test body that was built before the loco. So they can go on the next shelf down. Hopefully there'll be space for the first body there. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice museum-y piece. And then, of course, we've got Uncle Fredrickson's amazing balancing freight train. That has definitely got to go in the museum. Uh, so I think we'll put that in behind the Manning Wardle and have her haul it. I think eventually I'll make some labels to put underneath all of this stuff to explain what it is and when it was built. Okay, right, let's see what else I've got. Then I've got Uncle Fredrickson's amazing balancing coaches, and I had forgotten that I'd actually got a set of these. I thought, uh, well, I don't know, I forgot I'd made myself one. Uh, it must have been a, a photography sample or something I did. Uh, so yeah, I'll pop that on there, that looks all right. I've also got this uh, coach, which I'll throw in as well. I don't think, maybe that will fit behind Gladstone. Messed that up, didn't I? There we go. World's smallest passenger coach, that, which is clearly not true after the <laughs> Uncle Fredericksons. Next up, we've got the first ever Sam's Trains locomotive, my horrible Frankenstein 440. It is an important milestone, so into the museum it goes. Put that on the next row down. And I think for the row, well, for this row, I will put just a selection of my wagons uh, just to show what I've been doing with my spare time for the last year. Let's get some of those in. All right, so I don't have examples of every wagon I've produced. I sell a new one every month for my members, so join up if you want to, uh, but I don't always make one for me. So I've just got a selection. We've got the tanker, we've got the, I think that's the Great Western um, cattle van, that's it. Uh, let's put the S and DJR van at the front because that's one of the first ones I did. There we go. That's a couple. Some of these have got the old couplings, which aren't so great. And then the little, what's that, a three planker. And then there's enough space there, I think, for another. So I'll see if I've got my SECR van somewhere. I think I've got one of those. Yeah, that will fill that shelf up quite nicely then. There we go. Let's pop that in, couple it up. Then we got this baby, the uh, working brake van with the uh, little, what was it, a solenoid inside it so that it would have working brakes. That is definitely going in the museum. Okay. And then we've got some real stars of the channel. This is Speedy Pete, who of course was the, what was it, did I call him, the world's strongest locomotive or something. Even seen on TV was Speedy Pete, so I think Pete definitely deserves a place in the museum. That's if he'll fit with the doors closed. Willie, not been looked after, unfortunately, Speedy Pete. So he's not in a good shape, but yeah, he still exists. There we go. And then we've got this little fella. I can't remember what I called this thing, but this was also in a very well-watched video about the world's fastest locomotive or something like that. So again, that earns it a place in the museum. Let's pop that in there just behind Pete. See if we can make that look a bit tidier. Again, this has just been sat out in the open, so it's not it's been looked after very well, but there you go. This shelf's not looking as nice as the rest. Next, I have all that remains of the upgraded world's fastest locomotive I built. This thing was truly terrifying with this massive fan. Uh, I've got the rest of it somewhere. I don't know where the chassis of it is. Uh, again, this has just been sat in the back. I just chucked it in my box of bits. But now it's going to get some of the love it deserves. It's going to go in the bottom of the museum. Again, if it will fit, hopefully the door will close on it. If not, it will be back in the box. No, nope. that's all right. Next, this is quite the artifact, this is Victoria, and she's special because she was the villain in the most expensive video I have ever made. Uh, she played the anti-Christmas demon train, and uh, yeah, if you want to check that video out, I'll put a link up in the top right, and hopefully she'll fit just behind the brake van there. There we go. 
Next, how could we forget? We have Miles, a very, very famous loco on this channel because he ran for about 10 days without ever stopping and did, I forget how many miles, something like 250 miles or in scale miles all the way around the world. So that is definitely one for the cabinet. And then there's also the conversion I did for Miles so that he could run on solar panels. So let's connect him to his solar panels and let's get that hooked up on the track. There we go. And then the final exhibit for today is the reindeer, the gigantic reindeer pulling Santa's sleigh. Uh, I think that definitely deserves a place in the museum. So we'll pop that in and that will be the final inclusion for the time being. So that is all I have right now. If there's anything else that you can think of that deserves a place in here, then totally comment it down below. I think Bullman deserves a spot in there, but I use Bullman all of the time. So he is not able to join the ranks, unfortunately. But there you have it, that is my Sam's Trains Museum. And it's basically full, isn't it? Yeah, more or less full. Obviously, most of this stuff is gonna be out of service now, so don't ask for this stuff in requests because I don't want to be taking it out of this cupboard and such during live streams. Um, but, you know, some things like the Gladstone would be nice to run from time to time, so I will still do that. Uh, but I think there's just one more thing that we need to do to finish this video off, and that is a bit of graphics work, I think. Right, come on, please do this straight. There you go, that'll do, doesn't cover up too much of the uh, world's smallest passenger coach there. So there we go, that is it, that is my museum all done and dusted and I'm dead happy with this. The cabinet, it's not, you know, it's not an amazing quality cabinet but it does the job, it's strong enough to hold double O gauge trains, particularly 3D printed ones like this and that's all reflected in the price, just over 50 quid, really nice and easy to put together and it's, you know, it's reasonably sturdy, this thing is not going to move anywhere. So really, really pleased with that, links in the description, affiliate ones if you want to get one of these yourself and that that is it for this video so i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've enjoyed the shenanigans comment down below and let me know what you think and i will see you very soon for some more videos all right cheers everybody take care